Now, in order to support it appears Morgan's point of view that all you know gun owners in this country are absolute kooks. He had to do one better than Larry Pratt. He had to find somebody that was a little crazier. Hence, Alex Jones, who we do air on the weekends here at KMJ. Alex Jones out of Texas. He's an over-the-top kind of guy. And Piers Morgan went sort of over the top, baiting it for Jones, and Jones took the bait. Now, if you look in the British papers every day, which I know you don't, but I, for some unknown reason, do. Every day I'm looking at the British newspapers. Uh, Jones is being portrayed as an absolute ultra-white white right-wing whack job who would arm every citizen in the USA and, you know, um, oh, how do I want to put this? Just want, you know, absolute blood in the streets. You know, painting him as just somebody who would want complete anarchy 24-7 in the USA. Which, of course, he does not want. So if you did not hear this encounter that occurred on Monday that went on for quite some time, I've got about a minute of it here between Piers Morgan and Alex Jones. Now, there is animosity between the two that predates the the gun battle here because it's Alex Jones that put together this petition to get Piers Morgan deported. (laughs) Deported because of his position on gun control. It's like 160,000 signatures on this petition that went to the White House. And, of course, the White House uh, rejected the petition to deport Piers Morgan. What do you think they're going to do? Accept it? So (laughs) there's, there's a little bit of angst between Piers Morgan and Alex Jones anyway, which developed before this show on Monday uh, came to a real head. 20 plus percent crime drop in the last nine years. Real violent crime because more guns means less crime. Britain took the guns 15, 16 years ago. Tripling of your overall violent crime. True, we have a higher gun violence uh, level, but overall mugging, stabbings, deaths. You, those men raped that woman in India to death with an iron rod four feet long. You can't ban the iron rods. The guns, the iron rods, Pierce, didn't do it. The tyrants did it. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Many... Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? Hmm. Interesting. And it went on and on from that point. So, Piers Morgan relished in the fact that he found his wacko. He found his crazy man in the gun ownership argument. Now, to further this along, Vice President Biden has indicated that President Obama, through presidential edict, executive order, may be doing something this week or in the very, very near future than the restriction of the clip size or if something to do with semi-automatic weapons, etc., etc., in the way of restricting uh, something in the area of gun freedoms that been more or less protected for years and years and years by the Second Amendment. What Americans need to know is the president has no power constitutionally given to him in the way of presidential executive order of anything that dances around something that is already constitutionally guaranteed. He can't do this. He cannot do this. Yet, that's never bothered Barack Obama in the past. He just goes ahead and does it anyway. And Washington allows it. This time, I am hoping Congress, and one particular party, goes absolutely over the top if he indeed does this because it is constitutionally not allowable. 
He can't do it. This is a very, very dangerous precedent that the president is setting with all of these constitutional executive orders, presidential executive orders, excuse me, bypassing the Congress, the lawful arm of the executive branch of the government, Congress makes the laws. They can take them away. They can create them. They can pass them. They can call for constitutional referencing if, if indeed they wish. They can, they can set forth things that, that can ultimately wind up in the Supreme Court, as can lower courts. But the president cannot, through executive order, amend anything that is already written into the Constitution just through his own mouth because he wants to. He can't do it. All right, uh, back to the horns here. Chance, you're next. Hey there. Yeah, hi. I'm calling about Alex Jones, the guy that uh, the media is calling a nut. He's really not a nut. He talks that way. He's He's very emotional. He's a patriot. And he has a tremendous amount of information that you don't have and a lot of people uh, uh, that are conservatives that don't have. He's in the trenches digging up the dirt that the government's pulling on the people. Mm -hmm. And so we shouldn't picture this fellow as a nut. We should try to stand behind him. You know, if we, if we're going to hang separately if we don't hang together. Remember that expression? Oh, sure. And Alex is taking a big hit out there, and the right wing is, or people like you are not standing behind him. He's not a nut. Do your research, please, wait, wait, on him, wait, and you'll wait, find wait, whoa, out. Whoa, hold on. Legitimate. He's hold, very legitimate. Hold, hold on. I didn't say he was a nut. I mean, good. Back off here. <laughs> well, you indicated that a little bit, no, and, and no, I've no, heard no. Some I other announcers on the radio, too. No, no, I think he's got his rightful place on the airwaves, and I think he serves a great value. You know, I said he was used as a tool by that idiot Piers Morgan on CNN, the way that he was able to step into that trap that Morgan laid out and made to look like the fool by CNN. But, uh, no. Well, it, it's the way the man talks. you got to understand him. That's... Hey, he's a passionate dude, you know? Yeah. He is. He's yeah. a wonderful person. Yeah. Well, I, I, I bully for him, you know. I encourage people that listen to your show to go to InfoWars.com and really research this guy and find out what's really going on behind the scenes, the dirt that the government's doing to us as Americans. I really encourage that. And, and by the way, I, I don't advocate him. I don't, I don't, I don't follow him, but I, over the years I've listened to him over and over again, and the man is right on the money. He, he knows a lot of stuff that most Americans don't, don't know including very passionate conservatives. So, you know, and I love your show. I'm over in Morro Bay. Ah. I listen to it every day. And I think you do a great job. Thanks. And I, I will be calling back again. I guess I don't have anything else to say, but as okay. soon as I think of something, I will call you, sir. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. Thank you for being on the air. All right. You're, right. You're welcome. Alex uh, Jones, we've got him on Sundays now, if you want to catch him. People have, uh, you know, varied opinions of the guy. You either love him or you hate him. Right, Zach? And there went Zach, who doesn't like him. I mean, that's, it's one of those guys with, again, no middle ground, if you're familiar with his work. No middle ground. You either love him or you can't stand him. But he was used by Piers Morgan as a tool. He was used as a tool to further the, the gun control argument by Piers Morgan. And unfortunately, my opinion that Jones walked right into what Piers Morgan had set up for him. But that stuff happens sometimes if you're, you know, of a very high opinion and uh, you tend to be really demonstrative in your arguments. It's happened to me. I've been used. Same way. Uh, All right. 